Nice to meet you, Nate. Likewise, Austin. Um, I appreciate it. Yeah, so it's Ted's told me a little bit about you off and on. Um, yeah. Uh, so what what what's what's your story? What's been your uh, professional career arc getting uh, to the point where you're in sales? So I haven't been in the the HVAC industry too long. Uh, only actually about four or five years um, prior to that, uh, I was in the army uh, and I was actually a correctional officer. Um, just looking to kind of change professions. I had a buddy that did HVAC, told me to give it a shot. Uh, so I landed at Williams. Uh, that's the company I worked for um, and had quite a few guys there. You know, Jeff Howard was a big guy that was a big influence, uh, somebody I learned a lot from. Uh, Ronnie Neal, I was uh, grateful enough to get some training by him as well, kind of on the ductwork side of things. Um, so just kind of, you know, I heard those guys saying things kind of repetitively, things that they kind of stressed on. And I figured, hey, if these guys are, are saying this, th certain things over and over, you know, it's probably important. Uh, so I kind of tried to sink my teeth in it and uh, kind of be a sponge in a sense and just absor absorb as much information as I could um, and kind of progressed up. I started out as a maintenance tech. I mean, I didn't know what a, what a compressor was or any of that, right? Mm -hmm. So and I started out just cleaning. That was four or yeah, five years ago? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. Um, and then from there, went into service uh, and then kind of moved into where um, my specialty, you could say, or the things I did most was uh, duct modifications. So going into houses with high static pressure, um, comfort issues, things like that, um, and trying to figure out how to fix the ductwork to solve issues. Hmm. Um, ran into a lot of seeing, you know, five ton systems where I'm scratching my head wondering how the heck am I going to get ductwork big enough into this house. Um, so I was lucky enough to have Jeff to kind of, again, learn on, uh, lean on and learn from. Um, and learned about the, the blower door process, the comfort consults, um, kind of, I did the, the free onboarding for 2.0 a while back, um, but didn't, I wasn't doing comfort consults. So didn't I kind of paused that. it there. Um, I bought your book, read through that kind of tried to again, absorb all the information I could throughout the videos that were out there. Um, and then now I'm in this role. Uh, actually doing the comfort consults um, and it's been it's been a pretty nice experience just you know listening and, and following the process that that you guys have made uh, and staying on the the guardrails right and the bumpers there uh, kind of keeping me on track and on path um, to make sure that the biggest thing, right, especially once doing big projects and even on the ductwork side was I wanted to make sure that I was doing right uh, by the client, uh, doing the right thing, trying to help everybody out. That way it's a win, win, win. You know, the client wins. Uh, personally, I get a little bit of win there and the company as well. So just trying to make sure that we're doing the right thing and being ethical about everything, right? Choose your own adventure for the clients where they're not being. Exactly. I, I love saying that, the, using that book analogy, right? You, you pick your path. Uh, where do you want to go? I'm just here to, to help guide you. Yeah. Help, help them understand the pros and cons and the costs for. Yeah. And then like, so which one works better for you? Exactly. That's great. So what, what has been your recent experience with the free quote process? Cause I, I understand you're starting to dig in. So, yeah, I had, I had two of those um, so far. A lot of the, the free quotes that I've been getting are, are mini split estimates okay. uh, just because my role is a little bit different than the traditional sales guy at the company. Um, so they get more of the, um, more of the, the like for like leads, we'll call them. Um, okay. So, I had one uh, similar to, to Reedy's story uh, this past week where the guy wanted equipment replaced. Um, I tried to go through the, the entire report for him. He was kind of in a hurry. 
Um, so I just spent the time, you know, talking about equipment, kind of used the, the smiley face referencing that, that you guys have there in that reporting process. Um, and it, it turned into a fully variable uh, heat pump. Um, he's wanting to go 90% uh, furnace, doesn't want to move away from fossil fuels. Uh, but then, you know, duct modifications as well, doing some work up in the attic, um, a bad return drop, horizontal filter. Uh, it's a pretty big job, uh, about $40,000. Wow. So uh, I tried to stress, you know, hey, if, you, if this is something you really want to do, I'd recommend testing the house uh, due to timing. You didn't want to do that. Uh, he's kind of in a hurry. He had a couple people come in after me uh, and give him quotes. And then uh, I'm actually about to go out there now in the next hour. Um, he texted me at 11 o'clock last night and told me that his AC now is fully out. Uh, he doesn't want to wait anymore. He wants to go ahead and get the ball rolling. Uh, he wants to do it as soon as possible. So um, he's elected to, I kind of did the likely load range, you know, told him, Again, you, you choose your adventure here. Mm -hmm. uh, he's elected to, uh, to bump it down a half ton uh, and rock and roll from there. So I've kind of give him some, you know, odds of success, things that, you know, to expect um, and kind of stressed certain areas, right? Uh, duct work, the return drop was 12 by 20 on a four ton system, a one inch filter, you know. So going over those things, um, and then the other one I had was uh, was a space pack unit up in an attic that went out. Um, she's wanting to, she's got a boiler as well. Um, she's in a rush as well. Wants to keep the boiler for heat, but wants to, that one led to, uh, it's a full duct job, obviously, because he got those little three inch diffusers up in the attic. So unfortunately, we got to rip that out and, and go back with normal duct work. Um, oh, cool. But that landed landed in variable speed equipment as well. So the one thing I think I've noticed is uh, bigger projects, um, and not just because it's it's more money, it's more versatility and control for the homeowner over their comfort. So I feel like once once you kind of explain that, and and both of the people originally told me um, I'm going to get the cheapest system possible i want the really? cheapest equipment um which you know is i threw out a number you know for a combo about nine to ten thousand dollars um and both of those projects ended up being almost double that the obviously the forty thousand dollar one much more but the space pack unit um that landed double what she initially told me that she was willing so something i feel like sitting down and asking you know these questions even if the homeowner is a little resistant and not wanting to go fully through um the report and they're rushing you you know i try to at least stick to the questions um and again try to stay on those in those bumpers um and by the time we're done i mean i could tell you that the space pack client i could tell you her life story you know she's Clients open up, uh, they don't, from my experience, they don't kind of look at me as a salesman, kind of, mm -hmm. again, more more so as a guide and uh, things of that nature. So bigger projects, uh, better relationships with clients uh, and things of that nature. And a, a nicer paycheck for you too, which doesn't suck. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. So at any point though, have you felt like you are being coercive or slimy or smarmy or anything like that absolutely not and and even you know when they told me i'm gonna get the cheapest equipment you know and i, I told the client i will absolutely sell you single stage hvac equipment uh, but i want i want to let you know just the odds of success and the, the possibilities that could occur uh, if you do decide to go down that route and taking 10 to 15 minutes to explain those things and go over dehumidification and and variable speed equipment and even two stage equipment right i get i always give the options to to go whatever route they want whether it's single stage or two stage or, and variable and i never push anybody i tell everybody i'm not holding your feet over a fire i want you to do what you're comfortable doing 
Um, and by the end of uh, an hour and a half visit, um, they tell me what they want to do. And through my experience, it's always so far, it's always been variable speed, HVAC equipment, higher end equipment with more control. That's super. So it has this made your life feel easier as you've learned this? Yeah, it's, uh, and I, I, I told Ted this as well. It's, it almost lifts the anxiety off of me, right? I don't feel like I'm, I'm pressured to, to sell anything. Um, and very rarely do, is it a one call close, right? The, the guy that wants to move forward with the big project, I went out there three days ago and he had other people come in behind me um, and got a hold of me uh, after he got all the other quotes. So I'm not pressured to, and I'm okay if I don't, if I don't sell anything there, that's totally fine. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I tell the homeowners, if you want to go get some, get some more opinions and things of that nature, absolutely do that. Um, and if I give them my, my card and my number and tell them if you need anything or you'd like to, to move forward with an option that I gave you, just give me a call. And having that, and I feel like that lets the homeowner know this guy isn't just trying to snag me for, for a big check, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's funny, it reminds me of uh, the Mattress Factory, uh, original Mattress Factory. They have the, the commercials of, come on in, try it out, go out, do all your price shopping. We know you'll be back. Um, yeah <laughs> yeah uh, that's super well it's it, i mean a lot of what we've been trying to do for for years trying to figure out is how do we help clients truly solve problems on one hand and on the other hand how do we make the lives of those of us in the field significantly better uh, so do you think we're we're getting close on that goal absolutely uh, and i feel like the the path a that you guys are to is great for people that you know on the i've had very slim like for like quotes typically those are people that don't have cooling right they don't want to wait for a report they want it they want it now and and that's fine if that's what they want to do i again i always give that option to where we can slow down here and we can we can test your house uh and make sure that that we're doing the right thing or if you're in a crunch for time uh, I can give you some some ranges and some odds, and and you can go from there. And I feel like those like for like quotes with people with no cooling, that is the best option, right? The first time I asked the question to a homeowner, well, this is your range. What what size do you want? They looked at me like, I, you know, like what? Why, why are you asking me that? Um, so I just dived back into that where you know if you want me to tell you, I I have to test your house. I get you're in a rush. Um, so we want you to make this decision, right? I'm going to give you a little bit of education here and then you can choose that path. So I feel like the path A is, should be followed almost in a sense for people that don't want to do a comfort consult, right? It gives them that option to still give them better odds of success versus just like for like single stage. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So it, it's been helpful in client education, but I'm also curious, can, can you expand a bit on when you kind of inform clients about the likely load range? Like, so this could be anywhere between a one and a half ton and like a five ton. Um, how, how does that conversation go? How do they react? Usually uh, the words verbatim is, oh my God, that's crazy. And I just say, yeah, uh, it is. There's there's a lot of things that play into getting a load on the house. So we know certain pieces of the puzzle, but without diving, you know, super into it, um, that's not something that responsibly avoiding responsibility in that sense, right? So, but I feel like giving the homeowner the education still with that likely load range and going over the, how the equipment operates and again, the control and versatility that some equipment has over others mm -hmm. um, kind of gives the homeowner the, a little bit more ease. And once you break it down to them and kind of, you know, in the army, I've always had NCOs kind of tell me, I'm going to break this down Barney style for you. So I feel like once you, 
break it down Barney style for the homeowners and not, and on that path, a not going super in depth, um, but enough to where they're able to dissolve the information. It again, makes it not seem like I'm just trying to sell you something. Yeah. So it, it feels good to you being more of a consultant or a guide. Yeah. Yeah. And able just to have the conversation, right. And you build a better rapport with the client. Absolutely. Well, that's super. That's a, it, it's cool to hear your experiences because you're still relatively early into this. Um, again, yeah. Yeah. I'm i I'm a lot newer than a lot of the, the other guys that have been doing this for a while. Right. So in my head, I almost see it to where if somebody with virtually to no experience, right. Just four to five years in the trade that has a little bit of knowledge, right. If, if I can pick it up and do it, it's, to me, it seems like it's easily, able to be implemented right somebody that has twice the knowledge and experience over myself um would have just as much success if not more that's part of what we've been going for very early on i started saying we want this to be largely doable by entry-level talent um although at four or five years don't don't be too hard on yourself that's that's some experience there uh but yeah how long have you been in the sales side of things um, only probably about two, maybe three months. So not too long. So that, yeah, you're a newbie. Um, but yeah, four or five years of working your way up from maintenance tech, uh, and on up. So what was your last position before this? Were you uh, service? Were you install? What were you doing? I was technically service, but all I would do every day is I would run about two to three calls where I'd go out to high static pressure, indoor air quality issues, and duct work. Uh, and I'd figure out, you know, what exactly what exactly is going on, uh, give them some options. Uh, and a lot of the times when when quotes were accepted, I would design the duct work, um, you know, draw it up, order it, and then I would I was the one going back and installing it. Okay. Um, so I have a little bit of the install experience there, more so in duct work than installing wow. equipment. Okay. So that I feel like was, was good for me to kind of get under my belt um, experience wise. So that was, and I had that role for a little over a year. Um, and even, even that role, you know, I, I implemented, you know, Jeff talked to me about the, the Sandler, right? So I had those books in that role and um, talking to homeowners. I, I listened to that audio book a few times so I started implementing things that were done in the 2.0 process, but not exactly, right? Because I didn't have that role of doing comfort consult consults. Mm -hmm. So I even seen a drastic increase of jobs, projects, and, and ticket numbers over just implementing those things, right? So I kind of had an idea um, of how, of how the things work, but then going into the role I have now, it's kind of like eyes wide open, right? It, everything started to click for me. Um, and I, I feel like I understand and can kind of grasp it a lot better at this point. So what was one of the biggest surprises between doing like your, your duct consults before versus a comfort consult? Like, uh, what, what has shifted in your mind or what have you noticed, uh, as far as a, a change in process where you're like, oh, now I understand why these puzzle pieces go together. Uh, the biggest thing is once you see how skewed loads are uh, and how oversized equipment is, uh, you don't want to, you know, you got a 1500 square foot house, with a five ton air conditioner in there. You don't want to, to fix that ductwork because it, the homeowner is going to spend ten to twelve thousand dollars, possibly, and it's probably not going to solve their issues, right? So, again, I just the biggest thing for me is wanting to make sure that I'm doing right by them as well as by myself, uh, and making sure you know. I think the biggest thing was if this is something you want to do and you're committed to fixing, let's let's slow down, pump the brakes a bit here, and let's make sure that what we're doing is right. And because the last thing I want anybody to do is spend, you know, even $5,000 and 
and then not fix their issues and and they're uncomfortable still and worse the like in the do no harm side of things the bad part of doing a five thousand dollar job is the odds are fairly high you need to redo it entirely so it would just be wasted money correct exactly exactly and now i feel as if going through the process now you know we're giving them the options they're choosing that right so let's say they do a comfort console and they don't want to replace the equipment if it is oversized then if they absolutely insist, then then that's OK. Um, but I want to give all of the options and odds of success and things of that nature beforehand. That is the that is the number one thing I probably love on the reporting side is the odds of success and all the sliding scales that that you guys have placed within that report. Once homeowners see that, right, nobody wants to be in the red. Right. They want to be uh, in the yellow to green areas. So once once you're able to see that and again, tell them, I'm not just telling you this to, to sell you stuff. It's this is what's going on with your house. And that's super. So that, that's really good feedback. And I'm, I'm thrilled to just see it affecting your life because that's a lot of what drives Ted and I in doing. Yeah. This. <clears throat> Is that it? You guys have done a great job with uh, with the reporting and the process, and you start to understand why things are done in certain steps, you know, um, to cover all bases in a sense. What is one particular step that surprised you or one bit of order that surprised you? The... The initial, the comfort consult is all, all of the questions, right? I feel like that's something that really um, lets down the guards from the homeowner. Like I had one comfort consult that actually sold. Um, and I, I had a baby recently. I had a little girl in May. Um, and I appreciate it. I went back out to, you know, just kind of check everything out. I was curious after the job. Um and the homeowner had a, a gift baggie full of uh, new baby clothes and bottles and stuff that they bought me for, for my baby. Wow. So seeing the, I think the biggest thing for me is going over that and, and getting to know the homeowners, right. Asking questions that realistically probably no other HVAC contractor is asking them kind of gets their wheels turning. Um, and makes them makes them look at the situation differently than, you know, because at the end of the day, nobody wants to, uh, buying sixteen to twenty thousand dollar HVAC equipment. You know, a lot of homeowners would like to do a lot of other things with that money, right? Right. Yeah. So, going through that process and and getting them to understand the kind of breaking it down uh, to where they can absolve that information. Um, has been extremely eye-opening and then the reporting I feel like does a great job and you know you guys have talked about it in, in a previous video on a Monday of the summary of that report um, you dive into to things a little bit and the sliding scales there so I feel like the and the first time I did a comfort consult you know it was it was a little choppy uh, a little rough but even <laughs> so you guys have those hints in there, right? So all I had to do was sit there and read and, and repeat what I was reading. And it kept me in line. And then by the fourth one, you know, you kind of have what, what I'm going to say already. You know, I've done it a couple of times and have a, have a couple more reps underneath my belt to where now it's a bit smoother, right? Probably not as smooth as somebody that's been, yeah. Yeah, probably not as smooth as somebody that's been doing it for a year or so, but enough to where I, I'm getting comfortable within the process. Would you say it's important then to run a practice one or two comfort consults? Yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, I ran more than two. I ran probably four or five. Um, oh, wow. On, I mean, I went out on on Saturdays to some, some coworkers that I have, like, hey, man, you know, let me do a blower door at your house. Uh, let me do a comfort console. And I sat down with with three of my coworkers and then two people that worked in the office 
uh, with their families on a Saturday morning at their table, ran through it all. Um, so by the time I was able to actually implement it in the fields, it wasn't like, uh, uh, you know, I, I had an idea of where I was going with, with certain things. That's great. Yeah. Understanding the flow is important because there's, there's a lot going on in your mind. Uh, I find while you're doing, yeah. this, you're, you're asking the questions, but you're also trying to take it in and think of follow-up questions. And also like, what other things am I going to be looking for when we tour the house shortly? Um, yeah. And having that, the, the Sandler um, books, right. Those were, were life-changing in a sense and understanding, you know, how to, getting rid of that IBS and getting a homeowner to, to give you information to where they're comfortable to give you that. Right. Not because a lot of homeowners don't, uh, this guy's just trying to sell me stuff, you know? So they give you choppy, choppy answers. IBS, and, can you define IBS? What is it? Um, in, intellectual bull <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> right. So getting them to, to open up versus just giving me and. I can go back and pull the one of my first comfort con consults and I did have one word answers. Yes, no, yes, no, right? Fine. Um, Good. Yeah, like teenage yeah. answers. How was school today? Yeah. Fine. Did you learn anything? No. <laughs> yeah. Versus to the most recent to where they were giving me paragraphs of information. Um and and letting their guard down in a sense to where because at the end of the day, we're there to try to help them achieve their goals and solve their issues. And, and in order to do that, um, just flat out, we need the information. I can only help you fix what you let me know is wrong. No, that's that. That's really smart. That's totally what I've thought for years. Like if you go to the doctor because your elbow hurts and he doesn't ask you if your knee hurts, that's at least partly his fault. Yeah. Um, Cause that could flip the diagnosis. The, those extra pieces of information uh, can lead you down different paths. Yeah. Is it a prescription without diagnosis is malpractice. So, yep. Yeah. And that's, that is one of the curses of the, the, the free quote path is like it borders on that, but you're at least you were offering diagnosis. And if it yeah. gets repeatedly declined, um, then it, it's malpractice on their part, not on yours. Exactly. Well, that's wonderful. I'm I'm happy to just hear someone who's fairly early in the path because it's it's just been a little bit, um, and uh, so I'm I'm thrilled that it's being helpful, and I'm also I'm excited as we get the last couple of uh, key pieces in place for the free quote process. So it's truly useful because it's mostly useful. <laughs> right now mm -hmm. um but it should be truly useful very shortly so uh yeah we'll, we'll be very interested in in feedback on that for well even even the one i had to where he he didn't want to slow down to to go over that report right still pulling things from it uh and implementing it just in the conversation okay. uh, was great right so what questions did so you i feel like you know, we talked about static pressure. We had talked about um, airflow going over the, you know, wh what issues would you like your new equipment to solve? Do you, do you have any comfort issues? Things of that nature to where they're giving me information and, and I'm offering and declining. Um, that's, that's my new favorite thing, right? Offer and decline. Write it down. If you don't want to do it, then that's totally okay. Um, I'll help guide you from there. Um, but at least offering it and, and having it in writing in a sense, mm -hmm. um, you guys show, and I was telling Ted this, that, that, that little picture that you guys pull up is looking for the least of amount of responsibility. Um, <laughs> I'm just, yeah, being, being the guide and not the hero. Oh, that's good. I'm, I'm glad that it's all been coming together for you because it's been a long time building this and figuring these pieces out yeah um and after after running sales calls with it i i almost i wouldn't feel comfortable in a sense running it without you know um because now it's again everything is documented 
um, everything has been offered and, and they are choosing that path. Right. And, and by the end of it, the two time, you know, I, I don't have very much experience with the free pass, but by the end of it, you ask the homeowner, you know, are you okay with this? And, and they are, they are ready to roll. They're ready to roll and they're owning the, their, their own decision, right? They are comfortable in making that decision at that point. So again, it's not like you're, you're forcing anybody to do anything or anything like that. You're just giving them ranges, odds of success and, and possible outcomes. Oh, that's super. This is really helpful, Austin. I really appreciate you jamming. Yeah, I mean, in because it's I, I know you're just in between calls right now. Yeah, yeah, I got a little bit of time here, so and I appreciate I appreciate you guys for sure. It's it's really once you see it in motion, it's really eye opening, um, and and everything starts to really click. All the pieces come together, and uh, you understand why things are done the way they're done. Well, one last question for you. Uh, yeah. Do you feel like you are being supported at your company in using this process? Yeah, I feel like, you know, I've talked to Lindsay's my manager. I've talked to her uh, and just, you know, let her know that cause I, I actually had a meeting with her this morning um, going over my jobs because I'm, I'm trying to kind of get a baseline of how I'm doing just to make sure, again, I'm doing the right thing. Um for myself, the client, and the, and the company, obviously. Uh, but we were talking, all of my jobs so far have been, again, higher-end equipment, um, and going and just letting her, basically letting her know that it's it's not because I'm magic, right? It's, it's because I have uh, bumpers to follow to keep me on the path, um, and letting them know that my what's the word I'm looking for my results are due to the process that is followed if that makes sense mm -hmm. um, so I don't think that anybody's gonna say stop doing that when they see the results that are are come out of following the process well, that's does that answer your question Nate yep um, so it, it, your your manager sees what's going on and she's supportive of what yeah you're doing. Yeah. And absolutely with the comfort consults as well, because it's there to, you know, a lot of traditional like for like quotes just end with this is what you got. This is what I'm quoting. Here's your quotes. Right. I mean, the report is huge there on the comfort consult side. And I've actually shown that report to her. Um, she's a big fan of that as well. Like, okay. hey, I'm not just saying these things here's the information that I obtained from the home and here's how I'm relaying that to the homeowner. Good. So she's enjoying the, the comfort consult side of things in addition to the free quote. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I would say so. That's great. Well, uh, Austin, I wish you continued success. Thanks, Nate. I appreciate it, man. It was, it was nice to meet you as well. Finally. Likewise. Um, yeah, I appreciate you taking the time. I'm glad I had a, a little time this morning as well. Um, yeah. Shave. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I got to keep this beard, man, or else I look like I'm 12. So. <laughs> Funny, I've, I've always tried to look 40 myself. So, but now yeah. I'm 25. So <laughs> here we are. Yeah. Uh, uh, well, thank you again for taking the time and uh, um, good luck as you. No problem, man. Tread the path. Good luck helping out clients, and uh, um, that's a, I, I do really love just how you keep repeating. So, uh, how do we figure out what's best for every individual client? Right. Because at the end of the day, I think if we do a really good job of doing that, we do well for ourselves as well. Yeah, and 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 again, everything is documented, right? So if they decide not to do something, that is totally okay. <laughs> but remember. We can look back at this report and I told you about it. So it's all there, right? That's that's what we're going for. You got to responsibly avoid responsibility because so if, if you want to make a dumb decision, okay, you're going to jump on yeah. a plane, no parachute, sign here. <laughs> yeah, the stove is hot. Do not touch. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it's important to help give people an idea. And it's, I don't know, I, I think back to my 
or early days before, like I didn't hardly know what the difference between a furnace and a boiler was. Um, and so you just think that it's all a commodity. Mm -hmm. There's just one kind. It doesn't really matter. Just get one. Um, yeah. It just needs to do it. Bigger is better. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. And all, all of these things turn out to be incorrect the more that you learn. So it's it's important to help share that with homeowners in as quick of a manner as possible. So hopefully they take the information in enough so that uh, uh, when they say no to something, again, they own it. So do you find yeah. yourself sleeping better uh, with with this process, like where you're not worried yeah. about what's going on? Absolutely. Because I even like I said with duct work, the last thing I want to do is is have somebody spend money and it not – that would play in my head, right? Like, oh God, I just did this job and now there's all these issues. What am I going to do with it, right? Now I'm I'm able to, again, here's the information I obtained. Here's here's what's going on. Excuse me. And here's here are your options and, and you decide, right? And throughout the comfort consult, obviously you you find a lot more information on the home. So you're able to make more educated proposals, right? And in regards to HVAC sizing and, and all of that stuff. So, and I feel like I've had pretty good success and I believe it's through the, the process and the report on the back end of homeowners making, you know, somewhat smart decisions uh, for themselves, right? Because, uh, I tell every homeowner, your home is your sanctuary. You want to be comfortable within your own home. Um, and once you go over all of this with the homeowner versus just saying, well, yeah, I could sell you a furnace and an air conditioner, 10 grand, sign here. Uh, once you go over that with them, a lot of homeowners want to make good decisions, right? So I'm giving them the, the path to do so. And that makes me feel for good for myself, the client as well, and, and obviously the company. And then you feel like you own less of the results, particularly if they make the suboptimal decisions? Yeah, because then I can revert back to my report that I, that I have done. Um, having, you know, the, the list of all the comfort consults that were performed and having those reports there you're able to go back and, and go over it, right? Luckily, um, all the homeowners have been have been very pleased with the work that that has been done throughout the testing that I've performed. So uh, luckily I haven't ran into that issue, but if knock on wood, if it does come, right, I have uh, information to to back what I told them in a sense my last email yeah yeah <laughs> let's go back and read this report again real quick because <laughs> yeah sometimes you do need that people tend to forget um and it's it's so easy for homeowners to extract promises out of us for things that we really can't promise um mm -hmm. you're buying crummy equipment no it's not going to change your comfort it's oversized yeah. and we're moving to higher sear, which means worse dehumidification. So like it's, it's not going to get better. It's likely to get worse. Mm -hmm. it's, are you okay with that sign here? Yeah. Yeah. So, well, I appreciate you taking the time. Good luck as you head back over to that job and get your final details figured out so you can install it. I appreciate it, Nate. Thank you very much. No problem. Have a wonderful day, Austin. You too, man. But Thank you, Austin. That's awesome. Thanks, Dad. You guys have a good one. Okay. You See you, buddy. Bye. Bye.